Okay, um, been talking to you, brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Been collecting some more books. I wanted to share some books with you. So, I got a few. Some of you guys might have heard of some. Some are really old books that I found that were neat. Some I thought would be neat, but found some things in there that were wrong. So, I just wanted to start out with this to let you know that I found some good books and would like to share them with you. But before, some of these I don't have to actually go through close up. So, special edition, the old time gospel hour. Holy Bible, King James Bible. But it's, it's a giant print. So from a distance, I've showed some of these up close. So I found a giant print Bible. They're not easy to find. So I understand that there's some of you brothers and sisters in Christ out there who your eyes are getting worse than mine that could use a King James Bible. Now, I found another one, giant print, King James Version. Reference and concordance, uh, words of Jesus is in red. Uh, large lettering. So once again, um, I've only got a three set series where it's super giant. It's very hard to find those, but giant print, I found some. So I have two Bibles that I can ship out to anybody who needs giant, giant print. But super giant. Remember, I was talking to you about my other set I had. I've only had the two Old Testament, this type, the Old Testament. And the New Testament, I have an older book that's super giant print, but it's very fragile. So someone sent me to Amazon and said, hey, here's the uh, same books that you have, and they've got the New Testament, because it's three volumes, two for the Old Testament, one for the New Testament. So I went on there, and I'm like, oh, 40 bucks? It's good to have those in case my eyes ever go bad. So when I ordered it, they just sent me the Old Testament, volume two, when I ordered the New Testament. So once again, if anybody's eyes are getting really bad, these are super large print. So, I've got volume two, uh, First Chronicles through Malachi. So if someone needed that, let me know. Um, so the rest I kind of want to do up close. So I can show you some of the stuff that's, that I found and everything. It's pretty neat. So, let's get up close and look at these books. Okay, let's start looking through some of these books. First one I'd like to show out because I thought this was one of the neatest things. I think I've shown you guys this. I went ahead and bought the Texas Receptus, but I found this. The New Testament in Greek, West Cotton Hort. So, it's an old book. New York, 1928. Brooke Foss Westcott. I think DD stands for Doctorates in Divinity. And Fenton John Anthony Hort. And all it is is they give you, I think it's right here. I guess that's it. They give you, actually it's all, it's all Greek. That's all it is. But, sorry about that. Uh, before, uh, I think the nestle's along. So, I thought this was neat because now I get to use this. Alexandria, Egypt, Antioch, where Christians, Antioch, Syria, where Christians were first called Christians. So this is an old book that I found that I thought was pretty neat and interesting. Um, uh, another book I found, the Torah. First five books in the Old Testament. And so far when I read some of it, it seemed to this one seemed to read right on with the uh, King James Bible, just uh, small differences. But I thought this was pretty interesting that I found this, that I could read through it and compare it to the King James Bible to see what they have. I also found out that there's uh, the Torah, like I said, is the first five books in the Old Testament. Uh, books of Moses, 
And then they have other books that are called something else that have to do with all the other books in the Old Testament. But I like this one. It's pretty neat, in great condition. Something I get to go through. Uh, look at this one. This is going to be a gift from my uncle. He's into the Japanese culture and Chinese culture. And uh, found this. It's called The Christian Movement in the Japanese Empire, 1916. And it goes through and it talks about their life, the conditions they had to live, where different people went throughout all of uh, Japan. It's got charts in the back I thought was pretty neat. Um, when you get to the front, it's like all these uh, old-fashioned, um, what do you call it? Uh, they're trying to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get to some. Typewriters. They're selling typewriters. Okay. Let's see. Drugs in the old times. Pianos. So I, th I found this pretty neat that it was old. And like I said, it goes through and it talks about uh, some of the lives they lived over there, how they had to live, uh, their environment, the different churches that were over there. Bible societies. I just happened to flip the physical department. Bible study and evangelism. Conditions. Like one of these, the miners' towns. Conditions in the miners' towns. So I found this a really interesting book. An old book, Christian Movement in the Japanese Empire, 1916. Japan, Korea, and Formosa. So I found this pretty interesting. This I found, most people know about it, it's not like it's that big of a deal, but for me, I can use it for, to show people um, uh, the, uh, the Mormons, you'll see them walk around with this, look, we just have a King James Bible, you want to come to our church? But what they won't show you is this, Book of Mormon. Doctrines and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price. And I had a brother show me this. Uh, uh, Doctrines and Covenants. Oh gosh. Here it is. Uh, section 7. Revelation given to Joseph Smith, the prophet, and Oliver Cowder. At Harmony, Pennsylvania, April 1829, when they inquired through the Urim and Thummim as to whether John, the beloved disciple, tarried in the flesh or had died, the revelation is a translated version of the record made on parchment by John and hidden up by himself. Basically, the section 7 talks about how John never died. John, the beloved, shall live until the Lord comes. So you have a lot of Mormons that will say, we don't believe that, we don't believe John's still alive. And yeah, they do, you know, one of the apostles. So, so I got to find this, got it for a dollar. <laughs> so I can use this to show people and then if I ever feel called to correct and try to pull, you know, witness to people, Mormons, that I can do more videos on it. All right. This was a small book, uh, the Book of Psalms. It's a King James Bible condition or edition, not condition, edition, and that's the condition you want. It's King James Bible. But it goes through all the Psalms. I thought this was neat to hand to somebody or to take time to slowly read through this if you wanted a smaller book in your hands when you do your devotions. If you're going through Psalms, so I like to sing Psalms also. The Man Paul. At first I thought this was going to be interesting. It's an old book. But, Paul plays the Pharisees against the Sadducees of Resurrection. Okay. Bottom line, this does not use the King James Bible. They use, I think, the Revised Standard. Here it is. The references throughout are the Revised Version. 
So that was a big red flag. And then as you start going through it, uh, they, they talked about Paul, where he, um, what was it, uh, where he's got the Pharisees and Sadducees, they brought him before the Roman Empire, and he plays them against each other by saying, because I believe in the resurrection, that's why they brought me to you. So the Pharisees believe in the resurrection, Sadducees don't, and they start fighting each other. And because of that situation, the people in the book, the scholars back then, they had to take that and say, well, you see, Paul was so adamant about the resurrection. And it's like, when you look at some of these old books, because this is from Cambridge, and a lot of those professors, I guess they had to prove their superiority, and they go through here, and some of it seems good, uh, but a lot of it's um, them taking stuff to prove their point when they're kind of really stretching. So there's more I've got to go through this book. If I ever find something pretty interesting, I'll do it one at a time. But um, we're going to stop the video for a second. My dogs are going crazy, and uh, we'll continue from there. And we are back. I just don't have a good camera above me to zoom in. This is another one I got, and I was thinking, you know, it says, um, when, when Christ comes and comes again, uh, by T.R. Torrance. And I was like, well, when Christ comes and comes again, maybe they're talking about the, uh, you know, the the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, and then when he comes back at the end of the uh, uh, time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year time period. But as I started getting through it, I realized it was English Revised Version. I actually had to look it up to figure out which versions were being used. So, started reading a little bit of it, but when you start reading through and they're using a different Bible version, they're going to be off in a lot of places. So, when Christ comes to the church, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened. See, they're using a different uh, uh, Bible version. So, they might be talking about, you know, the end. They don't believe in a free time of Jacob's trouble. So, like I said, a lot of these books that I'm finding that I think are interesting... They can be if you're doing a lot of research, but I'm not really one that does a lot of research. London. A lot of these books coming from London. And uh, once again, back in the day, the scholars and everything, they had to keep coming out with stuff. Uh, the number one book I always tell people and suggest you read, once again, King James Bible. But every once in a while you'll come across something interesting. I started trying to read some of these and then when I realized they were really using Bible perversions, I usually put them to the side. Another one I got is, I found one on Luther's Works, Com Companion Volume, Introductions to the Edgetical, I couldn't even say it in the other video, Exegetical Writings, American Edition. Okay. And like I said before with Martin Luther, he did not seek to take himself away from the Catholic Church, period. He sought to reform it. So he kept a lot of things from the Catholic Church that he shouldn't have. Like the Trinity, uh, buildings, there are temples and stuff. But this is something that's going to be nice to go through. Luther as a Bible theologian, the Bible and the Word of God, Scripture and tradition. See, it talks about tradition, the history of the people of God, um, the practice of Luther's uh, case study. Um, that would be something pretty interesting to go through. So, any of these books that I have that you guys see, um, for me it's more like just taking time to read a little bit. Uh, but if you see something and you're someone who does an avid study, like study videos online to show things, and you're really good at research, I have no problem sending some of these books, mailing them to people. But I've got to make sure you're doing videos to enlighten the body of Christ on things. Okay, 
I know I didn't say the reason I kept this here. It's this is the companion Bible. Okay, it's King James. Ugh, if I can pick it up, it's a King James version companion Bible. Now this thing I would never give to somebody as a Bible, only for one reason, and we're gonna find that out here in a second. Five bucks. That's why. <laughs> Thirteen through chap uh, chapter three four. All of this is commentary trying to explain stuff. All this, I don't know how far we got. All this is commentary. There's so much commentary in this book. Um, and like I said, when you read some of it, it's pretty interesting stuff. So if you're doing a Bible study, this book is not too bad if you want to look at some things you might learn, things that you didn't think of before, like talks about the areas. Um, the people that lived in the areas when it's talking about in the Bible and stuff like that. So, it's not a bad book to read for doing studies, but I'm talking about for a regular Bible, for you to start reading for yourself and doing your devotionals. There's, it's small print, and I thought it would be big print when I first picked it up, but then when I opened it, I knew it wasn't big print. But it's got a lot of, uh, like I said, it's just... It takes forever to get through this because every page only has like a fraction of the verses it could because it has so much commentary. But it's something that I read some of the commentary was pretty neat. Some of the information about the, like I said, the area of what the Bible's talking about at that time and the culture and the, uh, the heathen people around them and what the Jewish people were going through and stuff. It was pretty neat and interesting. So. This, I thought, was amazing. Second greatest find so far. Um, I found an older Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible with Greek and Hebrew Dictionary. Like with most people, I went to so-called Bible college for a year, and they had us get one of these, but they weren't pushing the King James Bible. They were pushing all these Bible perversions and everything, which is weird. Because why would you push a Strong's Concordance that's based off the King James Bible? Um, so I went through here, I compared these, and it's based off the King James Bible. Um, you look up the word, it'll tell you where it's, um, where that word is at in the Bible. It even gives a fraction of the verse, too. So I thought this was pretty neat that this is an older version, which means it's probably less tampered with. So, I found this very neat and interesting. In fact, let's look real quick. Sometimes I look and I try to find the uh, copyright to let me know when it came out. But some of the old, older books, they really don't have copyrights. And like I said, right now I'm looking and I do not see... All it says is Crusader Bible Publishers Incorporated. Then it goes general preface and goes right into the main concordance. So, uh, 1886 is a, a date that's in here. But yeah, it just, maybe it's in the back. Like I said, I just I couldn't find a copyright on this to let me know how old it was. So I know it's a lot older. I should have brought my other one to compare it to to show you guys, but I have one of the newest ones. But this was an old one, and I thought it was pretty, pretty neat that God showed me it, and I found it. This one I had to be careful on because I saw an illustrated dictionary in concordance of the Bible. So... Uh, what was it? So I did find a page that shows a picture of Jesus Christ, so I have to make a decision to see if I can just color it out, like black it out, because there's a lot of good stuff in here. But one of the biggest things I had to start highlighting was they have some apocryphal books. Maccabees, Book of Esther, Ecclesiastes. They uh, quote from the New King James Version not just the King James. Um, uh, 
A, B, C, because King James is at the top of here. So it's not just the King James New Testament. So this was like the little red flag. So And then the Jewish War, I had to look this up and it's almost like this is, and I, I have a sister in Christ that can help me with this. Um, like this is, uh, yeah, the Jerusalem Publishing House, eight, 1986. So it's like a book for Jews that get saved. I, mean, I don't know. It just has a lot of history. And like I said, for some reason it uses these books. Like at the top here on the left, it says the Antiques of the Jews, Joseph. And it starts talking about that. And then down here at the bottom, it's a big book. The Jewish Wars, Joseph again. Jophus. So, I thought it was pretty interesting. But then, like I said, you get over here about Jesus, and then here they show the Catholic Jesus. He's got long hair. He's got the halo above his head. So, that's not the real Jesus Christ. So, like I said, i got to blacken that out. So I can still use this for research. I went through it. It's the only place where it shows images of the Godhead. But it's a big one. And like I said, it's got a lot of history in it. Talking about pictures and places that are throughout the Bible that it mentions. Uh, culture and stuff like that. It's a pretty neat book. So I'm probably going to end up just coloring out, like blacking out the uh, picture of Jesus. And then be able to keep this for a study Bible. Two more to go. This, you guys can let me know what you know about it. It says King James Version, What Must I Do to Be Saved? A devotional, James R. Anderson. I haven't started reading it too much because uh, I was trying to read some of the older books and then I went through and found out that they're Bible perversions and a lot of what they're saying is just them trying to puff themselves up like they're scholars so they have to come out with something. They have to have an answer because we're the answer people instead of just saying, you know what, I don't know. A lot of times these older books, you read them, they just have to have an answer for everything. So I'm going to read through this, try to highlight some things. Um, the Life of Paul though, the book that I had over there, The Man Paul, this book, it does point out a lot of good verses that talk about Paul and who he was. And I might do a video on it going through the King James Bible verses of what kind of Pharisee he was, the sect of the Sadducees, and um, you know where he started from, uh, his professions. So it does have good references. It's just it uses a Bible perversion. And a lot of times as I'm reading it, it's like, uh, that's not what's really going on, but they take it the way they want so they can have answers for everything. But I found this book, so if you guys have read it before, let me know what you think. Um, I'll be going through it myself, Some a good book to read. Um, and we already talked about the Companion Bible. So that's pretty much all Bibles. But remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ the best book you could ever have The Holy Bible, King James Version. And I'm just going to show one of them, but like I said, brothers and sisters in Christ, big lettering. So if you're out there and your eyes aren't doing so hot, I have my prayer and testimony email address that's on, on my uh, YouTube account. Uh, give me an email there saying, yes, you'd be interested in one of these uh, giant print Bibles. Some of them, even for the old words, help you pronounce the old words and stuff. Or old words. The words in the Old Testament that are kind of hard to pronounce. It does the pronunciations. So, so that's my updated book tour. When I get a lot more books, I'll keep going through. But like I said, you need some Bibles, let me know. I will order some. I've bought in Bibles online for people and had them delivered straight to them. So this one I've got to go through too. If it's got pictures in it, I don't want to be, I just noticed that. I, angels with wings. I don't want to be giving the Bible away. Maybe, like I said, right here, it's possible to rip out the pictures. So you keep just the Word of God. I didn't know this had pictures in it. Some of the pictures aren't too bad. I just pray it didn't show pictures of Jesus Christ because that is a sin. 
and it doesn't look like it. Unless they're trying to say this guy here on the camel is Jesus, but that's a camel. That's not a, a donkey. But some pictures and everything. So those pictures are the only pictures in this one and right here, Jacob's dream. I just don't like how there's angels that have wings. Okay. Some of these pictures can be a little creepy too. So I can rip these two pages out if they're really that bad. I'll have to look more into it. So, uh, but like I said, it's very hard to find huge print Bibles. Husband genealogy, ugh. presented to and by. Hey, this has got a um, what do you a, co a coverture, marriage coverture in it. Our family record that certifies that such and such got uh, and such and such. I think such and such. Someone and someone were united in holy matrimony on this day of the month in the year of our Lord at by and then witnesses. You have more than two witnesses. That, this one actually says best man, maid of honor, but um, that's what a, what a marriage coverture is. You fill this out, you have a godly man marry you, and uh, you have two witnesses. And it's God that's bringing you together and then giving you authority to marry. It's not the state telling you that it's okay to marry. You're not getting permission from the state. But uh, there's brothers and sisters in Christ that have talked to me and said they couldn't find anybody to marry them, so they had God. They quoted, um, and I think this might should be like a last, last resort, but they quoted Ephesians 5, and to each other their responsibilities. They made a big deal about it. They dressed up. Uh, they went somewhere nice, like sunset, the beach, somewhere, and... They did a similar, it wasn't just, you know, okay, we're man and wife. They still filled this out the best they could. They had a witness or two, and they just made their vows before God. Because today it's very hard to find Bible-believing Christians um, within, you know, <laughs> a day's drive, if anything. Um, and I showed this book. I bought this because it's volumes. This is the largest print you're going to get. And that's why the Bible's in three volumes. So this one, if anybody really needs it that bad, like I said, it's only volume two of three. So you won't have volume one and you won't have the New Testament. So thank you for watching. This is my second book tour. So I'll see you guys in the next video.